What up, big dogs? I apologize if I plug this into way too many videos this week, but it is an announcement that I need to make. We are hiring a full stack web developer. If you don't give a shit about that, fantastic. You can skip to this time. Tony, please link whenever the actual video itself starts. But remember, it's rude to skip introductions. We are hiring a full stack web developer for BDG. E. So if you are a full stack web developer and you are in the fantasy space, if you're familiar with BDGE and the brand, that is where we will be looking to hire first from within. Please contact info at bigdogsfantasy.com. We are looking for someone with real experience, okay? So I'm sorry we're not taking anybody from college. We're not taking anybody that does not actually have experience doing full stack web development work. You will be helping maintain, improve, innovate on our membership website, bdge.store. You will be helping create many new tools such as a dynasty trade calculator. You will be working on e-commerce stuff. You will be working on WordPress and the plugins. You will be working on all the nightmarish things like catch problem, cash problems, however the fuck you say it. And you will be working with us in our office in New York City, which will be coming early 2022. So if you are a full stack web developer and you think you have what it takes and you're good and you have experience and you want to work with us for us, please reach out. Info at bigdogsfantasy.com. Now bike to your regularly scheduled film. All right. So earlier today, we looked at the seven worst matchups in the playoffs and the fantasy playoffs for running backs. If you missed that, it'll be linked in the description. Make sure you go watch that first, then come bike to here. All right, we're also doing that for the wide receiver position, both the best and the worst fantasy playoff schedules. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get that information, those big facts. But right now we're looking at the five best, five best fantasy playoff schedules for running backs. Y'all know what we gotta do next. I don't have to say it, but I'm gonna yell it at you anyways. Tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Oh, let's see. And again, these are not in any particular order. I just skimmed down the schedules and I was like, that's nice. That's nice. This is very nice. Let me put it on the list and let's run with it. So first up right here is the San Francisco 49ers. We see a whole lot of green. It's like a motherfucking golf course out there with their schedules like from weeks 13 through 17. Seattle, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Tennessee, Houston. Four of those five games are against top nine friendliest teams against the running back position. Again, those are fantasy points per game ranked versus the running back. And when Seattle says number two, that means they are the second most generous. They've allowed the second most fantasy points per game to the running back position. So Seattle, Cincinnati, Atlanta, week 17 against Houston. Oh my goodness. So if we can figure out who the guy is there, if Elijah Mitchell could stay healthy, that waiver wire pickup in week one is looking like, you know, it might go down as GOAT status. You know, if he can rip off a bunch of monster games in a row, we might be looking at a, uh, yeah, never mind. I was going to say, might maybe rival James Robinson pickup last year, but absolutely fucking not. Not even close. The Detroit Lions schedule is not even close to what the 49ers are going to see over the last five weeks of the season. But if you look at weeks 14 through 17, again, playoffs for fantasy are probably moved by to week 17, championship at least, because it's an 18 week season now. Some of you guys play in playoffs where you play two weeks per matchup, okay? So you'll play weeks 14, 15 is like the semifinals, week 16, 17 is the chip round, all right? So they play the Broncos and the Arizona Cardinals in weeks 14, 15. Not good, not good at all, but they finish the year at Atlanta, at Seattle. So for DeAndre Swift, those are beautiful matchups. And I'd say against Arizona, while it's a very, very tough run defense, Kyler will be fine. He'll be at full strength. So we can expect Arizona to put up a lot of points. We can expect Detroit to have to counter. And anytime they're down by like 17 points in the fourth quarter, Jonathan Swift basically equals the number of catches to the points that they're down in the fourth quarter. They're now 14. He rips off like 14 receptions in a row. So with DeAndre Swift and PPR leagues, weeks 15, 16, and 17, I think beautiful slate for his ass. Denver Broncos, super interesting. Another golf course type schedule here to end the year. Weeks 14 through 17, they don't miss a fucking beat. Detroit, Cincinnati, Vegas, Chargers. Those last two teams are important to note that they are absolute run funnel defenses. Like Vegas and LA, the Chargers are extremely tough to pass against, as you'll see in the wide receiver videos either tonight or, or tomorrow. Again, make sure you subscribe to watch those. Vegas and Chargers are two extremely run funnel type defenses where great pass rushes, really good in coverage, really tough to throw against them, but on the ground, they absolutely get sliced up like a fucking machete. So Broncos, man, if we can figure out, man, if they just let Javante Williams coming off the bye 
this might be the time where they start to implement more Javante Williams, right? A lot of times we see rookies explode over the second half of the year. Hasn't been the case because they've used Melvin Gordon. He's been very good, so I don't really blame them from a real-life football perspective. But coming off the bye, they might decide to get Javante more involved. If that's the case and he gets to play against the Lions, the Bengals, the Raiders, and the Chargers over the last four weeks of the season, Javante Williams could possibly go on like a David Montgomery-esque run last year like we saw in the playoffs. So Denver, cake fucking cakewalk towards the end of the season. The Chicago Bears, speaking of David Montgomery, he might pull a David Montgomery, right? Week 14, they play against the Packers, which is not an easy game. They've just been a really good defense overall this year against the pass, against the run. So not a great matchup, but they play the Minnesota Vikings, who are the 11th friendliest team. So top 12, right? RB1 type numbers. Seattle, second friendliest team. And then the Giants, seventh friendliest team. We saw Leonard Fournette cut them up last night or two nights ago, depending on when you're watching this Monday Night Football. Didn't have a huge statistical game, but it seemed like every run he had, it was easy, open lanes, it was easy for him to run. They're just not a very good defense right now, and they're going to be very much out of playoff contention by Week 17, so I don't expect their defense to really be, you know, selling out, putting their bodies on the line by that point. We see that year over year where the shitty teams were like 5-11 and 11 or 5-10 and 10 or whatever at that point. Their defense just, just doesn't try as hard, man. They ain't a fact. I can't back it up with statistics except for literally Derrick Henry every single year. Just look at his stats. Teams don't want to try to, you know, tackle. They don't want to try to break their fucking neck against these running backs towards the end of the year when they're out of playoff contention because they're not playing for anything. Seattle, New York fits the bill for that. And the last team on this on this slate of five easiest fantasy running back schedules in the playoffs will be the Chiefs. They get that stack, as I mentioned, for the Broncos with Vegas and the Chargers, who are both run funnel teams. Number six, number four, Pittsburgh, who you might not think of as a team that you can, you know, run against or a team that you can stack up a lot of fantasy points against, but they're not really the same defense that they've been for the last few years. And a lot of the goodness of their defense is from the pass rushing portion of things, right? Like they get to the quarterback, but it's not really a problem for running back. So they're number 13 overall, not a not an above average team by any means against fantasy running back. And then they end with Cincinnati. And I mean, the important thing is the Chiefs scoring a lot of points and being the offense that they have been in the past and getting good game script for guys like Clyde Edwards Lair, who was biked this week. Looked like the RB1 there again. So with this schedule and him coming back from the injury and him looking good in his first game back, don't be surprised if Clyde Everett Slayer performs really well for you in the playoffs this year for fantasy. Okay, that's all we got for y'all today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Drop us a like down there if you enjoyed the video. Again, we will be doing the wide receiver version of both best and worst fantasy schedules tomorrow. And if you are a full stack web developer interested in working with BDGE, this is a full-time role, likely in New York City, email us, info at bigdogsfantasy.com. That's all I got for you right now. I'm out. I love y'all.